Hi, this is Fortune Buchholz with another video from NotFortuneSchool.com. You know, I'm traveling all summer, basically, really. I'm going all over Europe, but so many people have asked me to make one more quick video since Chiro Marchetti's Fantasy Echo Kipper Deck is now available. And you can get it from Amazon, both in Europe and in the US, or of course from your favorite metaphysical bookstore. They can order it for you with ease. You can get it from US Games and also from, you know, my favorite, AGM Konigsfurt Urania. And I prefer that edition uh, simply because of the quality of the card stock, the famous German card stock with the middle insert that gives the cards such snap and durability while still being thin and easy to shuffle. So if you like that kind of cardstock, then I encourage you to order the AGM deck, which will be available in the middle of August for shipping. So the, the um, question that a lot of people have asked me is, you know, uh, I've done all of the major and traditional sort of Kipper and Lenormand or Kipper and Lenormand mixed spreads that you often see, but are there any other more choice oriented spreads that are available? Everybody knows that when it comes to tarot, I really love uh, choice orientation. I love to see clients and sitters have the ability to choose the states they want to name where they are in their own words and to be able to put the cards together in their own language in a way that empowers them and directly accesses their lives, using the cards as a mirror of their consciousness and a mirror of their own language. And this is something that um, other teachers, I think, of Kipper and Lenormand sort of stress less than I personally do. So, you know, a very common cardomantic layout is uh, very well known. It's often called the fan, and usually it's five or seven cards. The one that I like to do is called the fan path, and it's actually ten cards. And I start by having the sitter choose how they're feeling now and how they want to feel, or their current situation in life versus their goal situation or their ideal situation. And then I lay out a middle set of seven cards, right, uh, plus a significator so that, um, you know, people can read the cards in groups. And then the middle card, the card that is paired with the significator, talks about the attitude that they need in order to succeed. So we'll do this the same way that I do all of my other, you know, sort of sample readings, uh, is I have this introduction, and then I'll go ahead, put up a static video of the spread, and then I'll actually put up the real card draw using uh, Chiro's Fendiseco Kipper, uh, and then I'll go ahead and actually just do a voiceover portion to explain how I read the cards. Of course, <clears throat> there are many ways to read the Kipper. The Kipper and Lenormand are both multifarious. There is no one right way to read the Kipper. So I always encourage you to journal. I encourage you to experiment. I encourage you to take the time and effort to make the cards work for you. Anyway, thank you so much for your continued support. I'm very grateful for your continuing interest in the video. I'm so gratified by all the highly positive feedback that I've received for the quote-unquote little white book or companion document that I wrote for Chiro's deck that I was uh, able to co-author. It was such a privilege, especially to work with Suzanne Zitzel, who is such a dear. Uh, anyway, we'll talk more about that later in another video. But in the meantime, let's just go ahead and get started. See you on the other side. Hi, it's Fortune again. So here we are on the other side in the static portion of the video. Uh, there are actually going to be two static portions here. I'm going to talk about how I lay out uh, the spread with this particular, um, you know, image, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you an actual layout that I did with an interpretation so you can see how the interpretation is done. And you can, uh, of course, either pause and write all the material on the slide down, or you can just go ahead in your journal and take notes as I talk, you know, whichever works for you.
I certainly can't claim that the fan or fan path is an original spread to me. It has to be, without a doubt, one of the oldest cartomantic spreads dating back at least to the late 18th century. But what may be more unique uh, to my style of reading and my method with the Kipper is you know how I use it and how I present it to clients and the choices that I ask clients to make in order to uh, allow them to see uh, that they are engaged in the process and how they can engage themselves in the processes of their own lives as they're living them instead of being passive in their own lives or succumbing to negative self-talk, criticism, lack of support, and these kinds of things. So uh, let's just go ahead and sort of talk through this diagram, all right? Uh, so I like to use the Kipper for this, although if, you know, people like the Kipper and Lenormand mix, go ahead and you know mix that for them if people tell you that their particular plan or project that they're attempting to achieve here uh, has issues both psychological and practical you know then it may be more appropriate to mix the kipper and the norman but i often do this with just the kipper so you know this is something that you should just choose uh, based on you know being with the sitter at the time and listening wholeheartedly and openly to their, you know, issue and see what will serve them best, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and just, you know, use the kipper, and I will be using the kipper uh, for the interpretation, you know, that you'll see later on. So let's talk about the first card there, card number one, which is on the upper left-hand portion. And this is where I ask people to choose their current feeling state. Where are they now emotionally or psychologically or spiritually, whatever they feel like, you know. When people want to get started but they have hesitancy, they don't know how to begin, they feel lost or confused, right? It's often very important to get them to choose and name how they're feeling now, right? That's one of the main benefits of this process is, is they have to choose and name, right? And then they can see that they may feel a certain way now, right, which they represent by the choice of this first card, card one on the upper left. But then we also see that we want to get somewhere. We want to get to a new feeling. We want to get to a new state, again, emotional, psychological, or spiritual. This is a goal state. This is the desired end state. And we also ask them to choose and name that state. And that's card number 10. We put that on the upper right-hand side. So those are the first two cards, right? Often, People think about a practical process that, you know, there's some thing that they want to do or some thing that they have to do, but they don't really think about their states, right, their states of mind. Not everything that people want to do is always necessarily going to be good for them, and they may not have necessarily thought that through. So uh, asking people to choose that end, get, end state or vision state can be very helpful in clarifying, first of all, one, if this is something that's really going to be helpful or good for them to do, and if it'll really be a growth process for them. So that's like, you know, the number one thing. Then the two is that, you know, to practice choosing attitudes, positive attitudes that you want to feel and positive places that you want to put yourself instead of feeling always that you're just, as I said, passive and floating along and you end up in these various end or emotional states and you don't quite know how you got there. But, but to show people that you can direct yourself and that you should be directing yourself. And this is really the two benefits of, of you know, choosing cards in this way. So that's card one and card ten. And let's go ahead and uh, look at the significator card, right? So now, as everybody knows in my work with both the Kipper and the Norman, I, um, you know, have three reliable significators, the traditional significators, uh, the main man, the main female, or as I like to call them, gentleman and lady, right? And then I use the child card for those uh, sitters who do consider themselves genderqueer. So I do ask people how they identify, and I have that conversation with all new sitters, you know, how they identify and which significator, you know, they want to use. And, and you know, then that's the significator I put down. Um, you know, so that's just very simple and that's very plain. Uh, then I lay out uh, the 
first set of three cards on the lower left hand side, the ascending portion of the fan, right? And whether these are read individually as steps or whether they're read together as one statement on getting started, how to get started, right? How to marshal your resources that you need. That will all become very clear as you are working with the sitter in the moment. Often, of course, it can be both, right? You read the, those three beginning cards together, you know, as a statement, as an overall statement, and then you also look at each card individually as a step. That can be completely appropriate. Then I go ahead and I lay out the next three cards, the descending portion, the right-hand portion of the fan, right? That is what you have to do to actually complete your project, right? How to make it successful. And again, in the same way, that can be read as steps. It can be read as an overall statement. It can be read as both levels at once. Whatever works, right? You're going to know in the moment, you know, how to read those cards and what works best for the sitter. So, you know, that's what you should do. Now, after you have those cards laid out, then what is the choice, you know, of that uh, middle card, the card that sits under the significator, right? Again, we use the significator the client actively has chosen. And so, what is the attitude that they need in order to get from the beginning states or stages to the end and completion states and stages? They may need to, to again, choose a deliberate attitude, right? What it is that will help them get from one thing to another? What will they need in the middle of the project? What, what energy they'll need in order to be able to complete the project? And so, again, I do ask people to choose that card, that card of attitude, as to what attitude they need to summon. All these little mini choices, again, are, you know, practices for what people will need to be doing all the time when they're engaged in any activity they want to be successful. It's not just a case of starting something and kind of muddling through it and then trying to deal with stuff as it comes to you, you know, being overwhelmed by, you know, the stuff that will inevitably go wrong or will misfire or, or won't quite come out the way that you want it. No, instead we want to... to actually have people rehearse making these little choices all the way through and that way they'll have more confidence and they know that they can simply choose. It's amazing sometimes how many sitters uh, who come from unskillful backgrounds, who come from unsupportive backgrounds with a lot of criticism, violence, negative self-talk, you know, who have been deprecated and so repeat uh, that experience in self-deprecation, it can be very, very empowering for them to practice these choices that seem so small but yet can really magnify in the midst of an activity to make it a success. So uh, I hope this explains the spread and um, that is all I kind of want to say about it. So now uh, give me just a moment and I'll set up the second static portion where I'll just lay out an actual spread for you. Um, and then we'll do a quick interp. So I hope that this is working for you, and I hope that you are interested in this spread. And again, I thank you very much for your time and your attention. Hi, so here we are in the second portion of the static video, and above you, you see the actual layout. Um, you know, as I usually do in these types of videos, right, I take a real client experience and then I, you know, modify it appropriately for ethical reasons. We always want to make sure that, you know, we don't abuse the confidentiality requirements that we have with our uh, sitters and, you know, with our clients. And we always want to make sure that our example and teaching videos are realistic you know, to real life, have a basis in reality, but at the same time, of course, we want to get people's permission and we always want to make sure that we, you know, change enough details to make sure that we, rep we you know, protect their reputation and their confidentiality. So that's what we'll see here as we see in all of my videos. Now let's quickly go through the cards that we have here in the layout and you can either pause the video again and lay out your own kipper deck, um, you know, uh, in this array, or you can again just go ahead and lay out the cards, you know, as I call them out and explain the position. I'm not going to go uh, too much into the underlying positionality of the spread because, of course, I did that in the previous portion of the video, so let's not waste too much time. So the first card that the sitter chose, this was uh, a woman working on a new um, project. She's a freelancer. 
Um, and so oh, her her first card that she herself chose is a card that, of course, is unique to Chiro's Kipper deck, card 37, Poverty. That talks about her feeling of being disadvantaged, of always being behind, of never having enough resources, of never having enough time, right? And this just general feeling of lack that... Uh, was overwhelming her at this uh, time. And of course, her future goal, her, you know, the card on the right here, oh, how she wanted to feel, was uh, card number 11, uh, Sudden Wealth. She, she liked that card not only for its monetary aspect, but also for its it's 777 that Chiro has illustrated on the card, the idea of luck, of jackpot, of making your own luck, of feeling lucky instead of constantly feeling lack, of feeling that you can make your own luck and you have luck. So that's why uh, she chose card 11, uh, Sudden Wealth. So then let's look then at the significator. She did choose the main female for herself. That's how she identifies. And then let's go ahead and talk about the first three cards here at the bottom. The first card we have here on the bottom left, the ascending portion of the fan, is of course 19 coffin, 20 house, and 18 child. So uh, what we're seeing here uh, really is, you know, we're seeing not only steps that she needs to take, but also an overall uh, sort of summation or, uh, you know, statement of the situation. So uh, she talks about how her traditional means of running her freelance business and the way she had been doing her work in projects had not obviously been really uh, successful for her. That's why she had this constant feeling of being behind, of not having enough, of constantly having to scramble, right? And, and yet she, she couldn't seem to move out of that rut of, of habits, of non-successful habits. So this is what we see. The first thing immediately presents itself to us in card 19, right? She has absolutely, you know, got to stop that process, right? Uh, she has got to end, coffin, put a nail in it, you know, put the lid in it, move on. Her... Her old mindset, her old methods of work, all of that has got to change. She has to make a firm commitment as the first step to just stop that, right? Then we see next, interestingly enough, card 20, right? The progression in the deck, right, is house. So she needs... Uh, a new foundation for herself. I also um, talked to her about whether she had been thinking about moving her office or getting a new co-working space, which in fact she had been. Instead of working from home, which was really not working for her, she wasn't able to concentrate, she wasn't getting things done, she was getting distracted. You know, so that work process has to end, and she was, in fact, considering moving into a co-working space where she would have a, a place with all of the materials she needed to work, and that would allow her to really focus on her work and make a, a clean separation between home where she was distracted and a workplace where she would go to actually do work and that was, you know, apparently a very key for her. Then uh Card 18 knew, you know, I, what was the new thing she needed to do? Of course, these are new work habits, right? This is a new, more professional outlook where she, you know, looks at her own time and her own, uh, you know, daily organization as a new thing that focuses on how she's going to conduct her business. It's almost like a reboot of the business in, in this way, in her mind. She also talked about the new product that she did want to launch, Right, and she did talk about how she had written uh, this material, but you know she hadn't really gone through the process of, of focusing on it, of editing it, of honing it down, you know, of really adopting it and being excited about it. You you see how card eighteen features a a child who you know. Uh, really has a very bright face, a very bright attitude, and this is the attitude that she needs to project as she begins this new thing, and also, of course, the innocence and hope that she needs in order uh, to carry her through the idea that she can be successful, she can make these changes, right? She can focus, she can do the editing, you know, she can polish it up and make it shiny. So, um, 
she felt that like this was very um that these were really the first three important steps and that this layout so far, in fact, echoed what she felt like might be necessary, but she hadn't really been able to commit herself to do. And so I would say the overall statement, right, is that, you know, a new structure, right, child plus house, new and structure, right, is the end of your poverty. And so that's kind of the statement that I wanted to make there. So then let's kind of quickly go on right and let's take a look at the next three cards the descending right hand side that talks to her about how to you know take that through from the middle to the end to be completion and you know to meet that goal so first of all it seemed to me immediately we have here card three marriage right which in the kipper is often you know partnerships right so in this case I asked her if she had thought about you know working with someone on this project to help her out and to serve as a second set of eyes and to help her test and review this project maybe what she needed instead of doing the editing herself was to actually you know get a professional editor and have that editor work on this written material for her and that's something she absolutely had never thought of because you know, she had always felt that the things that she'd been doing were very personal to her and very unique to her. And the idea that she would, you know, reach out for professional support in the editing was not something she had ever felt comfortable with before. So we talked about, you know, whether that would work for her. And then we, we looked at card 36, which was, you know, her wildest dream, right? Your distant horizon, which you really, your deepest wish. And, and I talked about how she could work with this editor or this other person in an effort to make this really just as fine and just as perfect as she had ever wished to make this really her best work ever and to always have you know this sense of high polish and a sense of a high goal for herself not just you know enough to make the project good enough by the deadline but to really you know, push it out and to really excel and believe that she could excel and that she could create, uh, you know, something even beyond, right, that she could amaze herself with her work. Uh, and that was something that, that, you know, we talked about for a long time because an issue for her was, of course, feeling, as not everyone, but many people do, you know, that uh, they really can't uh, always get things the way that they would like it, particularly under the constraints of, you know, a tight budget and a tight type line. And, but how it is that you can take your restrictions and your limitations and you can use them as guides to push yourself forward and how understanding from the beginning the restrictions and limitations that you have, you can still, you know, present a really super stellar product that you are super proud of and uh, that really is the natural a goal and end of the project and not just something that you, you know, do adequately uh, to get by, but to really make it the very best and how limitations can help you do that instead of hindering you from that. But then we did talk about uh, card 34, occupation, right? So th this card is kind of interesting because it, you know, it has a dual sense. It has a, a sense in, in Chiro's deck of, of, a hobby or avocation, right? And also, of course, you know, your professional trade, your occupation. So the, the Chiro has built both of these meanings into this card. And so we talked about the duality of these meanings, right? You know, and here is where we got to sort of the nub of her situation in a certain way, was where she talked about how she didn't always feel like a professional. And she, like so many people, at times had sort of the imposter syndrome come up, right? She was just a hobbyist. She was just a freelancer. She just, she wasn't, you know, really the pro. This wasn't really her passion. This wasn't really, you know. So uh, we talked about how she could move from card 34's understanding of, you know, what is a hobby, you know, what is an avocation into, you know, a card 36 mindset of wildest dreams, right? How can you make this thing that you do, your passion 
and your wildest dreams. So we, that was a very fruitful, you know, aspect for her because sometimes as you kind of move through the day to day, especially as a freelancer, just trying to put the invoices together, you know, to meet the bills and, and you know, picking up any project that comes your way because you feel behind, you know, asking yourself, are these the right projects? You know, is this, is what you're doing really the passion does it, is it really going to represent your best work? Is it really going to be great in your portfolio? Is it really the right thing for you to do? And, you know, uh, so we had all of these kinds of conversations, which I think you can see very clearly how they come out uh, of these three cards and how the statement here, right, uh, from just, you know, reading the cards uh, as a trio, you know, right, is, is just going to be, right, that you're dream partnership right results in your passion you know the work that you do that's really fantastic and great for you so that that's sort of you know these were what we talked about both as statements and as steps and she felt um you know very empowered by this she she felt she had talked through a lot of issues that she had not been able to voice before and that she had not really uh, had been wanting to admit to herself uh, that she wondered if the imposter syndrome that had been bothering her had been one of the reasons that she had been so distracted trying to work from home and how maybe you know working with a professional editor in a co-working space would really take her to a new level. So she was very satisfied with this and and we'll um, you know kind of see how that works out for her. So then let's go ahead and go to the attitude card, right? She chose, I think, a very interesting attitude card for herself. She chose card number five, the mature man. Now why did she choose that card? You know the mature the mature man or the rich older man is uh, is a benefactor. It's someone who's kindly disposed to you. It's like an uncle, you know, someone who wants to help you, an older male relative. So she identified this person really with her grandfather and how her grandfather was always so supportive of her and um, always uh, made her feel like she was very valuable, right, and that she had unique talents. And she realized that she needed to be her own grandfather in this way, right? She needed to have this sense of, you know, uh, not bombastic grandiosity, but she did need to believe in herself and she did need to be self-supporting. So that's why she chose this card and that is the attitude she decided to adopt towards herself throughout, you know, the goal of this project. So again, I hope that you found this quick reading and interpretation, this explanation of the spread useful. Uh, not everyone who comes to you with a path or a goal will have these kinds of obstacles. Some people are very positive. They know what they want. They've been very successful. And you can uh, still use the cards for a more positive, self-empowering aspect of goal setting as people move from strength to strength. But this was not the case that I had here before me. And so I just wanted to present this uh, to you honestly. Again, thank you for your time. I hope that you found uh, this fan path of 10 interesting and enlightening. I hope you're enjoying uh, using Tiro's Kipper. Certainly it was a great pleasure for all of us who worked on this deck to make it for you, to revive the Kipper system, and to, you know, let people into its special nature, as I like to say, the, the perfume of the Kipper. So if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to you know, contact me or follow me on social media. I'm always happy to make another video when I can. I might be able to make another video in a week or two. Uh, we'll see how the rest of the summer goes. So please feel free to go ahead and you know, suggest topics that you would like uh, to hear about and I'll be happy to consider them and make the ones that you know seem uh, right and appropriate for the Kipper. So again thank you so much and I hope to talk to you soon. Until then enjoy your cards.